Major from The Prophet Goddess, and I think you're going to love some of the clips that you see here. And that's what yeah. the book fixes for people, is it just, in a very simple fashion, just uncovers, look, it's not rocket science. Just do this and this and this, and you're going to figure out where your issue is. We're going back to school. We're going back with to With Major school. Marley. <laughs> so we have four key points. The first one is that you want to make a plan. How do you not become a statistic? Well, three things. Number one is so many entrepreneurs don't have a system for tracking their time in the first place. My dad was just like, okay, let me make it simple. But are you making any money? I think it's it's so much better to stand apart if you mm -hmm. can. And the other thing is whether it's parties or even in business is to kind of own your slot. So when everybody's doing a holiday party, I'll tell my clients, hey, listen, own something else like the Kentucky Derby or St. Patrick's Day, which is wonderful to have a waiting list. But often I find something is wrong. If you have a waiting list that's too long, your prices probably aren't high enough. Often your work comes home with you because you are doing a pickup or something and you don't have those really clean lines of here's my office and here's my home life. I like to know at any point when I run a report, if I see the number 12, I know that that's for the year 2012. And then I started to think about it and I really realized nobody talks about pricing and money and margins. It's like this dirty little secret. You know, how are you going to get there in the morning? Meaning how much time do you need to allow and lay your outfit out the night before? Because it's those things, let's face it, right? That we spill on ourselves right before and that blows things. So practice and do it ahead of time. But the problem with being an entrepreneur or having a small business is that we're busy, busy, busy all the time and we don't have a ton to show for it. When you do discount something, put on the invoice or send them an invoice even if it's going to be comped to zero. So right. they go, Ooh, bleh. like. Because what I found is that then when they come back to negotiate something different later, you're like, you know, hi, I already discounted this, this, and this. And nobody can thank you for a gift they don't even know they got. So it's just about being a little bit more mindful about where you spend your time. A lot of times it's great because they can be your advocate if they've got a client that's just not a match. Remember, sometimes it's just a personality thing. I understand what it's like to do business in this economy and be challenged and stressed and have all the technology things as well. I'm pretty passionate about it because I sort of have my PhD <laughs> in failure. And I decided, <laughs> Me too. <laughs> you know, and I decided that it was easier just to own it and help others. Kind of you focus on your numbers, your margins then you build from there. Wrong clients are like pushing water uphill and it's constantly annoying. And take, forget maybe new clients, they take time away from your current clients that are really great. They take time away from your current clients and then all of a sudden everything starts to suffer. Don't right? over volunteer. Don't over volunteer right. and then it boils down to really just saying what are your goals and what are you not hitting in your business and then refocusing your time accordingly. But you've got to be quick. You've got to recognize them and you've got to jump in and handle it. The key takeaway from this piece from, from this whole part of the coding system is this uh, stops the confusion. What do you mean by that? Well, what I mean is that the month keeps going and all you have left is a stack of bills on your desk and you've got no cash in your bank account. And so there are all these w reasons why. Well, I really think that there are five. I think, first of all, we have to remember that we've got to practice, practice, practice. I mean, the Olympians didn't get there and just show up and all of a sudden win a gold medal. So we really have to focus on what we're after. I can warm my way into pretty much anything. So it's a unique selling proposition and it's also just about, you know, focusing on what it is you want. And, uh, and, I, and I have no attention span nor patience, so I can get you there faster than probably anybody else in the world because I'm like on a, you know, rocket ship day and night. I'm like the fun money girl, okay? I'm not, I'm not, you know, serious money girl, obviously, because I couldn't handle it myself. So I had to come up with a way that made sense for me to make money. And what I did was I, I started grouping my expenses into three categories. And most importantly, I found is time. We don't take into consideration how much time goes into whether it's sewing that garment or servicing a customer. The second thing that we do is we spend time on things that aren't beneficial to the bottom line. And, and being in business, the goal of being in business and the goal of business versus a nonprofit or a hobby is profit, right? First of all, don't panic. As soon as I see the Halloween decorations come out, I start thinking, oh my gosh, I've got to make my numbers. So the yeah. first thing is to really say, have I, how am I comparing my budget numbers to where I am? It's like construction. You know, they say, yeah, take the number and double it or triple it. Business is exactly the same way. And, and what I always tell people is, Plan that it's going to cost you twice or three times the amount to start your business that you think it's going to cost. You really can research some of those online and, and start with getting the support if you don't have another small business owner. Fantastic. Yeah, great. I wish we could just go longer. In I each know. One. Well, class is dismissed. Yeah. We're done. <laughs> so what would you think? I think it'd be even better 
if we did something together. So super easy, just email us or email my publicist, Diane White.